Uh, again, once again, once to, we want to welcome every single person that is watching us live. We want to welcome you in the presence of God. And also as you are here in this place, we believe your time will not be wasted. Amen. As you are already in this place, we believe that you were blessed by these testimonies. And we're going to go into the word. And in these just short minutes, I believe that God will still give you more grace to overcome the challenges that you face in your life. Amen, church. Um, this, uh, this evening I just want to speak uh, quickly on a topic called the temptation to derail. The temptation to derail. We, each one of us in life, we, are, we have two things that are in common. We have a beginning and we have a destiny. Each one of us, we have that and that cannot change. You, whatever you do, you cannot change your beginning, the way you were born, the way you brought to this world. And you cannot change your destiny, the dream, the goals that God has for your life. But there's one thing that each one of us have in charge and we're in control of is that space in between your birth and your destiny. It is that place, the, the, the time that you have to get to the goal, to the destination that God has for your life. Satan cannot take away your destiny. He cannot destroy your destiny but he can tamper of how long it takes for you to get there. Through your situation, Satan either can make you derail he can make you stagnant or he can make you abandon the destiny that God has for your life. The, the, the question I have for you tonight is how do you handle your situation? Ask your neighbor, how do you handle yours? To ask your other neighbor, how do you handle yours? We know that the graveyard is the richest, per, the richest place on this earth because there was many dreams many talents many destinies that were abandoned because satan has succeeded through temptations through sin through unforgiveness to derail people from what god has called them to if you go to the graveyard today there's so many ideas so many inventions so many talents and dreams were shattered on the rock of temptation because people could not say no to sin and uh, and couldn't say yes to what God has, has done for their lives. If you have your Bibles, let us open to the book of Genesis chapter 37 and we're going to read from verses 18 through 20. And it says this, now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, look this dreamer is coming. Come therefore let us now kill him and cast him into some pit and we shall say some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will happen of his dreams. We have to understand that every single person that you ask in this place who wants to be great, who wants to achieve their dreams, who wants to accomplish uh, great things for God, who wants to rewrite the history of their family, not one person will say that they do not want to do that. Every single person, they, they want to accomplish great things. They want to do mighty things. They want to become millionaires. They want to become great husbands. They want to become great pastors, great leaders. They want to become healthy in their body. They want to become the center of their own world. But it, it, is, it is that um, not everybody is willing to commit and pay the price to get there. Everybody is willing but not many are willing to commit and willing to be persistent. We have, we live in the, in the generation today that are, they want to do everything like a microwave. They want to, you know, get the best job just through one interview. They want to rise on top just through one act. They want to just do these leaps of faith and, and not live a lifestyle of faith to accomplish what God has for their lives. Everybody is willing but few are willing to commit and pay the price for it. Everybody wants the diamond but nobody wants to go through the dirt to get that diamond. Everybody wants gold but nobody wants to go through the fire in order for it to be purified and to be real gold. Everybody wants honor and praise and to be able to rise to the top but nobody's willing to get the PhD in blackmail and in, uh, in backstabbing and in, 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 in uh, name calling and slanderous remark. Nobody's willing to go through the pain in order for it to rise on top. We see many people in the Bible, many great and many champions of faith, they had to go through thick and through thin in order for them to accomplish the destiny God has for their lives. And this evening I just want to give a few points, the things that we can learn from uh, the life of Joseph and other characters in the Bible that we can take, that we can learn from them. How was it that they are able to accomplish the dreams that God had for their life? Are you ready to learn church? I can't hear you. Are you ready to learn? Number one is 
no temptation can overcome you no temptation can overcome you in first corinthians 10 13 has it says that no temptation has overcome you but such that is common to men that even if it becomes hard that god gives it a, a power and grace for us to overcome it god will never give you a situation and a thing more than you can bear god has given us a, a, a strength and ability that everything that comes our way we can overcome it and we can succeed there are two types of temptations that I want to speak uh, to you. Is first one is sin and second one is unforgiveness. Run away from sin. You can write that down underneath that. 2 Timothy uh, 2.22 says, flee youthful lust. We have to understand that God has never called us to fight sin but to flee from it. God has given us uh, the weapons against Satan to withstand him but God has not empowered you to be able to let me go fight the temptation. Temptation is coming away. Oh I'm gonna see how uh, maybe this today I'm stronger. Today I can defeat Satan. And our Bible says that flee youthful rust, lust but pursue righteousness, faith and love. We are not called to fight lust. We're not called to fight temptations but to pursue righteousness, faith and love. We have to understand that, that we have to run away from sin. That is number one temptation that Satan brings to our lives to be able to derail us from our destiny. We have many dreams and destinies being shattered on the rock of temptation of sin. God has created and placed inside of you ability to dream, to reach high places. But many times Satan comes to you with his lucrative ways and begins to tempt you with sin say you know what you will not accomplish this you know you you will not get there just go have you don't need to go to church you don't need to live a, a holy lifestyle you don't need to be honest with your finances you don't need to be respecting and honoring your parents you can just live however you want and you'll still get to wherever that you're getting that is what Satan has come to Cain and he, he begins to, to tempt him and to be given, given a temptation of anger. And, and Cain was standing and God comes to him and says, Cain, you temptate, the sin is lying at your door and it's desire of you. But you should rule over it. You should overcome it. Every, each one of us were facing a temptation of sin on a daily basis. And it, it is a challenge from God. To be able to run away from temptation of sin and to pursue peace, love, faith and righteousness. And that is how we see happen in Joseph's lives. We see that there's two people in the Bible that were faced with, with temptation. We see Joseph and Samson. Joseph was faced with the temptation at the Potiphar's house and he ran away from that temptation and it led him to prison. We see Samson in the Bible when he was faced with the temptation and he embraced that temptation and he also landed in prison. But we see the difference between Joseph and Samson being in the prison is that Joseph was graduated from the prison to the throne. But Samson, he graduated from, from the prison with his lost sight and he went onto the throne of suicide. There's two ways you can get out of your prison. There's two times when every time we're faced with temptation, we can either run away from it or we can embrace it. We can say yes to youthful lust, to pride, to dishonesty, lying, cheating, you know, not being committed to a church, to be able to, to uh, not be faithful at your workplace, not honoring your parents, or we can live a righteous life. Yes, we might encounter prison, but that prison, if you run away from sin, will either graduate you to your throne or graduate you to your suicide to graduate to your life without God and that is life in darkness that is life with the devil and that is a life in depression and fear and anxiety and in sickness when you when you overcome temptation every problem you face will be temporary and if you don't overcome temptation every success you will have will be short every time you overcome a temptation Every time you just, you, you run away from that temptation, every problem you will face will be short. But every time you will embrace that temptation, you, you will take, you will say yes to sin. Every success that you will have will be very, very short. 
and just like Ilya said earlier today that whenever Satan offers to you with the right hand that looks like blessing with his left hand he will take away that which your life depends on and we see that happening in the Bible we see even the perfect you have to understand Satan is so clever and he was able to to take such a perfect life Adam and Eve had I mean there's no nobody can ever even imagine the life Adam and Eve had and he was able to trick them and to lie to them and make them say yes to sin and no to God and he ruined their life forever Satan is so clever to be able to bring to you something that looks like blessing. Even in the Garden of Eden where situation was at its perfect state. It is life as you could dream of. Satan was clever enough to bring something to Eve and Adam that looked like blessing. But with his left hand, he took away that from them which life depended on. This evening, I want to challenge you that you can overcome your temptation. You can run away from that temptation and to pursue righteousness, pursue faith, pursue love, pursue God. Begin to have and strive to that relationship with God. Yes, at this time it might seem painful. Yes, coming to church and committing to church, it might seem like my friends are having so much fun. My friends are pursuing careers and dreams and goals and, and I'm here, you know, always at church, always, you know, serving God, giving my tithe. But you have to understand when you follow God, Every success that God will bring to you will, will last forever. But everybody who's without God, their success is very short. Because whenever God, Satan gives them to them with his right hand, that's something that looks like blessing. With his left hand, he takes away that which their life depends on. Amen, church? And second offense is, uh, second offense is unforgiveness. Overcome offenses. We, have, we see in the Bible that... Uh, uh, we see that forgiveness strikes the root of all pain. Forgiveness means that we let go of that fence, hurt, regret, or anger we so desperately think that belongs to us. We see in the Bible, uh, Joseph, when he was faced with the temptation where his brothers uh, betrayed him. His brothers, uh, you know, just plotted to kill him. And then after that, they were like, okay, let's sell, sell him into slavery. He had a temptation on not to forgive his brothers. He had a temptation. He had a hurt in his life to say, you know, they've done to me this. I don't deserve it. You know, I, I didn't do nothing wrong against them. He was faced with the same temptation of unforgiveness. But he chose to forgive and that led him to his throne if if Joseph did not forgive his brothers he would never encounter his throne we see same thing happen in the life of Jesus before Jesus was uh, was about to when he about to die on the cross he was before before that point at the most painful part of his life he said Jesus forgive them for they don't know what they do he was also faced with the temptation where his own brothers begin to betray him. But he had to overcome the temptation of unforgiveness. I was saying, you know what? Yes, they hurt me. Yes, they did wrong. But God, they do not know what they do. We have many offenses in our lives that maybe been caused by parents, that maybe been caused by loved ones, but maybe by a husband or wife, by, by, by our peers, but those who are close to us. And the Satan will bring that anger, that temptation that said, look what they've done to you. You know, look, look what they what they've did to you. They, they treated you. They, they misused you. They abused you. They said so many words of you. They blackmailed you. You know, you just, you can't forgive them. And that is the temptation that Satan brings to you to derail you from the destiny that God has for your life. We see King David and as he's been, you know, he's been serving King Saul faithfully and he was just serving his life and just give his life for King Saul to protect him. But Saul begins to pursue and wants to kill him. And if David did not chose to forgive, he would never become a man after God's own heart. He would never arrive to the destiny of being the greatest king that Israel ever had. And this is the temptation that Satan brings to you tonight. Overcome the temptation of offenses, of unforgiveness. It was maybe to your pastor. It may be to your, your, your leaders. It may be to your friends. Maybe to your parents. Whoever has hurt you. You need to choose to forgive them so God can set you free. And then you can remain on this road and to achieve the dreams and the goals that God has for your life. Amen, church? And number two, and then the second thing that we can learn from the life of Joseph is hard work. Joseph was a man of 
of perfection. He was the man of he he given his all. We have to understand when when uh, Joseph was given bread to take to his brothers. When Joseph at his Potiphar's house. When Joseph was in a jail cell, he became best. He worked hard. You cannot be in charge of a Potiphar's house if you are a lazy man. You have to understand that. Potiphar, who did not know God, who wasn't Christian, was able to entrust everything to Joseph's hand except his wife because Joseph was not a lazy man. Yes, there was a favor of God upon, uh, upon Joseph's life. You understand that. But the Bible says that God blesses the work of our hands. If the only thing that your hand does is scratches your belly because you ate good, then that belly would grow. God will bless it. But Joseph was a hard man. Joseph knew the work ethic. He knew that no, you have to work. You have to give your best. You have to, you have to be honest. You can't lie. You can't cheat. You can't just cut corners. You cannot take shortcuts. He knew how to work hard and that is something that we learned from that. In order for you to achieve the greatness, the dreams that God has for your life, you cannot be a lazy man. You have to work. You have to learn commitment. You have to learn consistency. You, just like I said, in Potiphar's house, Joseph became the best. Joseph knew how to work hard. He knew that, you know, you cannot rise to the top if you're lazy. You have to work at it. You have to, you have to be honest. You have to go an extra mile. You have to begin to sweat in your, in your eyebrow in order for you to get on the top. Because if you are lazy, nobody will entrust you with anything. In uh, Proverbs 10 verse 4, it says that lazy people are soon poor, hard workers get rich. And if you can, uh, there's a quote that Prophet T.B. Joshua says that work as if everything depends on us and pray as if everything depends on God. Work as, as hard as you can because as if everything would depend on you and pray as if everything depends on God. We have to understand God cannot do your part a same manner that we can do we cannot do what God has to do. You cannot take God's job and God cannot take your job. It's a 50-50 thing that you have to come halfway and God meets you halfway. You have to work as if everything depends on you and you have to pray and trust God as if everything depends on God. You have to see another thing from the story of, story of Joseph that Joseph began to fulfill other people's dreams. We see when he was in Potiphar's house, he became to do everything. He was successful at everything that he did. When he landed in the jail, he began to serve in the jail that the, the jail man began to put him at, as a head of, among all jail. He began to, when the people came, he begins to serve them, to fulfill their dreams, to fulfill their destiny, to be able to interpret people's dreams. He was not a lazy man. And this is calls us to be able to serve people. Joseph was a man who served, who knew how to give to others. He was not a selfish man. He knew that in order for me to get to my throne, in order for me to achieve my destiny, I need to know how to serve. I need to know how to give. And that comes just like George was talking to, uh, to uh, today and challenged every single person that we need to start a home group. We need to learn how to give to others because God has blessed us. We need to learn how to begin to, to, uh, to pick people up from their pain, to be able to pick people up out of their bondages, out of the sickness begin to pray for people begin to love on people and to begin to serve them and that's one thing that we can learn from Joseph's life is that he fulfilled people's dreams and what is the best way to fulfill people's dreams is through home group is when you get involved in your local church and you begin to serve people you begin to pick them up out of you know, when they were in drug and drug addiction you begin to pray for them that God sets them free God raised them up they get a job they begin to have a family they begin to have a marriage they begin to rise up they rewrite the history of their family and that is the way you serve is through your local church through your local home groups to be able to give to those who are in need to be able to give love to those who are in love to be the father to the fatherless to be able to give that care and attention to those that do not have amen church also in proverbs 18 verse 9 says that he also who is slack in his work is brother to him who destroys he who slacks in his work is a brother to him who destroys. And this is 
we have to understand one thing is that there are many talented people there's many gifted people and people that God has given them gifts but hard work always outruns talent hard work always and always outruns talent we're talking about um, you know being punctual in your workplace we were talking about being being committed to your church we're talking about that you know you do not begin to lie and cheat on your hours at work that you you know everything that you're asked to do that you begin to do you begin to serve and you begin to put hard work at home when your parents ask you to do something that you just don't take everything you put it under the rug and I cleaned or when your pastor asks you to do something that you begin to put it off to put it off that if our hands is lazy God cannot bless your hand if you are praying that God everything I touch let it prosper but your hand is lazy you're basically praying a, a unfruitful prayer you're praying a, a a prayer that will not be answered and in Proverbs 20 verse 4 it says sluggards do not plow in season so at harvest time they look but they find nothing and in Proverbs 6 verse 6 says take a lesson from the ants you lazy bones if that's you say amen no, I'm <laughs> learn from their ways and become wise take a lesson from these ants you lazy bones learn from their ways and become wise uh, if you can put up a picture of Thomas Edison and something that really touched me what he said that you know many people credit him as him being a genius and he said that I was a genius is only one percent inspiration but 99 percent is uh perspiration is means sweat and hard work genius is only one percent but 99 percent is hard work and in sweat and something that he said is that if you think these insane work ethic were only invented today think again Thomas Edison has over a thousand nine hundred U.S. patents under his name Everyone thinks that he's a genius who was born uh, to invent, innovate and change the world. But Edison does not credit his genetics for his many accomplishments. He said that, I never did anything worth doing entirely by accident. Almost none of my inventions were derived in that manner. They were achieved by having, by having trained myself to be analytical and to endure and tolerate hard work. That is that. He knew that. You know, being a, ge a, a, ge a genius, 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 it's only 1%, but hard work is 99%. And that is something that we see in the life of Joseph, that every place that he was placed at, he became the best at. He was placed in the Potiphar's house, he became the best. He was placed in the prison cell where, where dreams were shattered. You think that it is the end, but in the prison cell at his worst and the darkest place, he begins to rise on the top because he understood the principle of hard work. He understood if you're diligent, if you're honest, if you put in sweat, God sooner or later will begin to bless everything that your hand touches. Because God cannot bless a lazy hand. Amen. And the last point I want to challenge you with is live in the future state as if it were already here, as if it were already true. Live in the future state as if it were already here, as if it were already true. This is talking about living a life of faith and this is we see clearly and clearly from the story of Joseph. They called him, hey look this dreamer is coming. When God has showed him the picture of his dreams, of his future, he was from that point, he was known as a dreamer because he lived a life of faith. He lived a life in the future state as if that future was already at this place, as if that future was already accomplished and it was already true. He knew that one day he will come to that place and he begin to walk by it. He began to, to say that look I am a destined king. I, I'm, a, I'm a chosen Tracy. God has chosen me for the high places. And if you need to accomplish your dreams and your destiny, you need to live in your future state. Where is God calling you to be today? Maybe you are sick in your body and God, you know God has placed the promise upon your heart that you will be healed. You need to walk as if it was already true. As if it was already here that by his stripes I am healed when everybody somebody asks you how are you feeling I am healed I am blessed I have more than enough you begin to work at your workplace like you are already you have more than enough that you are a prosperous person that you're no longer poor you're no longer bound by you already everything that your hand touches is blessed you need to live in the future state 
Joseph knew that whenever he was placed in the part of his house, he never lost track of his dream because when the temptation presented itself, he said, no, this is not where I belong. So he ran away from that temptation. Every time David was persecuted by King Saul and he was beginning, he had the temptation of killing Saul. He knew that one thing, I am a destined king. I know where I belong and it's not here. It is not as a murderer. It is not a one that goes against the anointed one. He lived in the future state. He knew I am a man after God's own heart. I am a king deep down inside. I know I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a chosen. I know I'm a holy person. I know I'm a righteousness of Christ Jesus. I know I already have my, me my house already serve the Lord even though maybe your kids are not serving God but you proclaim and you stand on the promise of God that me and my house will serve God maybe at this point you you are living from paycheck to paycheck and you have and no money in your bank account but you begin to proclaim that Philippians 4 19 that my God will uh, my God will give me according to his riches and according to his glory so you begin to walk and you begin to talk like you're a prosperous person you begin to talk as if you already had more than enough when God says that he'll put you ahead and not to tail you know you begin to serve other people you begin to become a leader and you begin to open your own home group and you begin to be influence other people you begin to become a mentor to others to raise people because God has already placed you on top if it, everything maybe your marriage is not working out things, things are not 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 working and then just in a fight and anger you begin to walk in the future state that God has joined us and nothing will separate there'll be unity there'll be love and there will be harmony I challenge you tonight and what we can learn from the story of Joseph not to derail from your destiny not to begin to derail from the dream that God has placed in your heart begin to run away from sin every time sin begins to present itself remind yourself where I'm going every time people hurt you backstab you blackmail you call you with names begin to betray you begin to forgive them begin to bless them begin to pray for them have hard work ethics be be honest at your workplace be honest with your parents with your spouse and your family don't cheat don't lie corners because God will bless your work and the last of all is live live in faith live in faith and many of you maybe will face a situation tonight maybe some things are unbearable but know one thing that trials are the soil in which a man of faith flourishes whatever situation is if you are the man of faith if you walk by faith standing on the promises of God know the one thing that trial is the soil in which you will flourish and you will be on top in Jesus name amen church